Hi there, Mark Bowden and Michael Leckie with Career Ask Me Anything. If you have questions for us, michaellecky.com forward slash ask or in any of the comment boxes that you'll see around you. Here's a question that came through and, and it's been asked in many, many different ways by many different people. Let me pray it for us. Uh, how do I balance the need for self-care and managing my disability with... Oh, I've lost the side of the question there. Hang on, let me... With the demands of my job and career aspirations. So really, you know, how do I manage, you know, what I want from a career with, you know, what I need to do to manage any kind of disability? Michael, uh, this is a, a tricky one. What, what have you got on this? Yeah, you know, I was struggling with it, but the first thing I thought of is, well, I think part of the answer is in the asking there is that you need to actively manage it. You need to think about it. You need to have, you know, a plan and a strategy. Um, I, I think that you live in a world where, you know, in, in most cases, hopefully, um, you know, self-care, managing, taking care of things is more recognized now. I, I do think one of the one of the kind of, you know, hidden upsides that came out of the, the COVID pandemic was that we realized there's a lot more going on in people's lives than we used to actually pay attention to and that we need to accommodate. And the world is getting more accommodating of people who have whatever their, their situation is. But also, I, I think simply you just have to figure that out and have a plan for it. So I, I work with um, a, a very senior leader of an organization um, who can find themselves working insane hours, traveling, you know, and very, very stressful, stressful job with high stakes and a lot of people's lives and jobs on the line with the decisions they make every day. And one of the things we talk about is when do they need to pull back and just take that time away to re-energize and recharge? And at first it was like, well, if I do that, something's not going to get done. And then we had to realize, yes, something's not going to get done today, but it'll get done tomorrow. And the fact of the matter is, is if you want to keep getting things done, you have to take care of yourself. So we talk through the plan, how they manage that, who they can get to help, when is the best time to do that. And we have a strategy. It's, it's like when my kids were young and they were going to school and they were like not getting along with someone and they knew there was going to be conflict. They're like, well, you need to have a strategy for when it happens, what are you going to do? So I think that's the one thing that comes to mind for me is have a strategy, have a plan, and know you're going to have to actively manage it and be ready for that. Be ready for people not understanding, people's, you know, strange reactions. Be ready with letting them know who you are um, so that they can accommodate who you are. I, I think the only thing that comes to mind is oftentimes we don't ask for help really well in our world, at least my view, especially, and I know at least in... In, in Western cultures I'm most familiar with, we're not good at asking for help. I'm always amazed at the, you know, someone falls over and they're laying there bleeding on the sidewalk and someone goes to reach down. What do they say? I'm sorry. Why are you sorry that you're hurt and bleeding? It's not your fault. You didn't do it on purpose, but we don't like to accept help. And so therefore we oftentimes don't tell people where we need help. And so the other thing I would say is as part of managing that, I think actively involve those around you in managing it so they can help you until you what are some options that you have and what are ideas they have? And they know why it's happening so they don't fill in the blanks of your absence with things that are negative and unrelated to the fact that you need this time for that self-care or to manage this disability. Mark, what do you think? Yeah, I think those are really, really good points. Here's what comes to mind for me is that you're absolutely right. You need a plan and a strategy because you're managing something. And I would say your plan and your strategy should not be emotional. It should be cognitive. And here's the issue. When I think about me and my health and my family and, you know, all the things that are important on the me side of things, that can be quite emotional. And when I think about my work and career and all the things around that, well, that can be quite emotional as well. So I've got two conflicting emotional things. And I've got to try and manage that by taking the emotion away for a moment to create a plan. So here's what I'm doing, Michael Leckie. I've got, I've got my little plan. There we go. I've got, uh, hang on, over here. Yeah, I've got my little plan here. One side says me and the other side says career. Okay, and there's a line down the center. And I'm going to put down all the things that are important to me. Okay, I'll be a bit generalized here, but you should probably be a bit more specific. I might put family, health. Well, let's just think about health. I'm going to need time. You know, I want to go and see my doctor regularly. So doctor regularly. Uh, things like, oh, and career, okay, so that might be like, you know, promotion, 
um, you know, satisfaction. You've been way more specific than I'm being right now. But now I've got to go, okay, so I've got to balance these, these two things. You know, and every now and again, I should look at this and go, you know, maybe scale of zero to five or seven or 10 or whatever you want to do. How am I ranking this? Where am I on these, on these things? And is there the balance that I want on that? I'm not saying it needs to be absolutely level set. I mean, it could be like more, more me than career or more career than me. You want to work out what balance are you looking for? But essentially, you're doing that not by having a gut instinct about it and going, oh, you know, I, I, I hate my career today because I'm feeling unhealthy. You know, that's, that's emotion. Nothing wrong with that. But we're probably not going to make really great long-term decisions thinking like that. If we get into the plan, we assess where we are, we look at where we wanted the balance to be, and then we go, okay, what do I need to do to rebalance that? We're being more cognitive, less emotional, not that the emotions can't play a part, but let's just stick with the with the cognitive idea from moment one. That for me is a plan, a strategy, or certainly the start of a plan and a strategy. Uh, Michael, anything more you'd like to add to that one? No, I think you I think you summed it up well and took it into a great little action point there. And the bottom line message is have a plan, have a strategy, manage it actively, ask for help, and, and do it by thinking about the difference between those cognitive and emotional aspects of it. I think that's great. So for others, if you have questions on anything around your career, it's Career Ask Me Anything with Michael Leckie, Mark Bowden, and you can ask us those questions by putting uh, comments or asking questions wherever you're seeing this. But probably the best place to get it to us immediately is at my website, michaellecky.com uh, forward slash ask. And that's the place where you can put all these questions in and we will be glad to get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks for your questions and see you next time.